was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, the only creature stirring was the woman who came from a foreign land and thinks the house is very dirty. Why did they clean it up for them? Hi there. Merry Christmas, everyone. My name is Chris Fair, and welcome back to my channel, where today I will be reviewing not one, but the last two episodes of 90 Day Fiance. It's season eight, and this is episode two in three of the new season. So I did a live for both of these episodes, but I missed doing an edited recap of the second one. So putting them together, honey, in one big Christmas package. What's underneath your Christmas tree? Honey, what's in your stocking? Is it coal? Is it a mama's boy who's a pesticide worker on the side who can't tell her to stay out of your sex life? Is it a crazy hair banshee woman from the Ukraine with crazy lips and blue eyes? You know who I'm talking about. Maybe Bo will be in your stocking. You guys can have matching leather jackets and drinks. Lots of them. Ooh, too many to count. Oh, you're okay, right? I wanted to give you some Christmas cheer, honey. So like full Christmas backdrop. This like isn't even a Zoom backdrop. Like, ow, that's my fireplace, you know? Whew. Okay, let's get into this, shall we? I think we shall. Okay, first couple, Brandon and Julia. Brandon's parents have escorted him to Washington, D.C. and have paid for Julia to come over and so they basically get to do whatever they want. That's how Betty likes it. And Betty controls everyone in this family. Stanley slash Joe Biden, Brandon, Brandon's peony. Whatever comes out of Brandy's peony, still hers. Oh, yeah. But Julia gets off the plane, honey, and they kiss, 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 kiss. And it's a lot of really, really awkward nose kissing where their noses are in the way all the time. Stanley and Betty are right there. Hi. Look at them kiss. That's not how mommy taught him, but okay. Ugh, here's the thing, like, Stanley and Debbie, Debbie, I'm, I'm gonna make those mistakes over and over again because Stanley and Betty are like an old swinging couple who are now excited to like get a new couple on the farm. So Betty has set up the whole weekend, right? Because she gets to control everything, including dinners, all the sites, every monument. I don't know what would possess a woman to think that Julia wants to see like all the monuments. Like, of course, Washington DC is great. And I've been there and there are definitely sites to see. The Natural History Museum was great. I remember that. Was it the History Museum? No, there are great sites. I mean, listen, I haven't been there in a minute. Like, I think that was a eighth grade trip, maybe. I'm just saying, Betty, what are you thinking? They just want a bone. Make babies. They want to make your grandbabies. We've already talked about it. But what really works here is Julia, honey, who we get to see Julia, and she is like a little firecracker. Honey, she's been a dancer. She doesn't give an F. These Eastern European girls, like, come to conquer. At one point, she's like, fuck off, Betty. In confessional, she tells Betty to fuck off. We're like, oh, say it in her face, say it in her face. Julia's like, I look at all the American people, I say hi. I take green card a nice day. Joke. Ha ha, ho ho. But you know what? They make it to dinner and Julia gets the talking to about the room sit. She doesn't get to stay with Brandon in his new big boy room. She gets her own room. I mean, here's the thing. I'd want my own room. I would just want a place to put all my stuff in my own space. I love my own room. And if someone or me wants to like join someone in a different bed one or two nights, like that works for me. But for Julia not, she wants all her stuff in Brandon's face. She thinks he's perfect. Little Peter Pan elf on a shelf is perfect, but God bless. Okay. Julia is upset about this. And she is like, Brandon, you tell your mom that we will be sleeping together. And Brandon's like, mm, mm, I tried that and I want that. I promise I want that. It's just that also it's like her house, it's their house. And I kind of get it. It's like a respect thing. Like he goes back and forth with Julia. Julia's like, no, 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 no. You tell them. If they don't let us sleep in the same bed, we're out of here. <laughs> and Brandon's like, right, but we can't be out of here. We don't have any money. I don't have any. I'm in debt. Real bad debt. On my live, someone is from their neck of the woods and was like, oh, I live here. It's like very cheap or whatever. And so, I mean, you know, he just can't, he doesn't want, he cannot, whatever it is, he's, it's not for him. And like Julia's like threats. I let us like, you can't threaten someone when you're 
backed into a corner. It's not how like the power thing works. Like, I don't know. <laughs> just, but she gets to the next morning, honey. Uh, and just kidding. But she gets the next afternoon. It's 12.15, jet lag. And Brandon's bought her coffee. That's lovely. Some sort of like yummy like breakfast sammy or breakfast burrito or a bagel. Honey, I'm not quite sure. Whatever it was, put it in my mouth. And um, she's going on Debbie's itinerary of Washington, D.C. sites. She's a tour guide. Did I say Debbie again? Betty's a tour guide. Betty. 12.15, honey, we missed like the first 10 stops, but I guess we're fine. Picking up in the afternoon. 107, the Korean Monument. 113, the Vietnam Memorial. And Julia has got a selfie stick, honey, and she is just zazam, 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 me, 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 and Brandon, me, and Brandon, me, and Brandon, me, and the whole family, me, and the whole family, me, and the whole family, me, 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 more of me, we take a picture of me, how about two pictures of me taken at the same time, angle, angle, I mean, Julia's like, oh, I'm just gonna put this all over Instagram, and I'm gonna make everyone jealous, because we're all gonna be like, where are you, it's not where we are, we wish we were where you were, but we're not, we're here, but look where you are, we are envious, like, is that how Instagram works? Yeah, I guess it is. Julia's also, honey, like taking jabs everywhere. She's like, why are Americans so fat? And they run? This one's running, I mean, barely. I mean, like falling from foot to foot, but still fat. <laughs> Julia also doesn't do politics. There's a moment where like, I think we're going to like talk about the current president of both of those countries, hers, Russia, ours, America, which you know, has been a little nail biter anytime anyone brings it up of recent or whatever. And so I was like, oh, a little bit, who, who, what do you think? Well, what's this life like? And she's just like, nope, not for me. I don't care. Mm -mm. Those are other people's stuff. Not me, not Julia stuff. Julia stuff, dancing and not farm work. And even, I know that, I just met her. So Brandon now has to go back to his mom and be like, uh, so here's the thing. Julia wants me to just like reiterate how much we wanna sleep together in the same bed, even though you know we're not using birth control. And Betty's like, <laughs> no, 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 no. Nope. Zilch. Absolutely not. Hmm. No. Oh, Julia wants you to talk to me again about this? Hmm. Let me see if my mind has changed. Nope! <laughs> not only does Betty not want them to be in the same bed before they're married, she doesn't want the same bed and even after they're married. Even after they're married. If they're in that house, no. You guys can keep them separate. Even when they're at the hotel, you know she's so mad that she has to be across the hallway from them. Mike and Natalie. Okay, so we were picking up. Natalie is about to come over and she's made it clear that she doesn't want to live with Bo. Not into Bo. Bo's a no-go. Bo's got to go. And we know Bo. We love Bo. We feel like A, it's sad. B, that's not a stranger, that is his family. C, you did have Mike live with your mom. However, D, your mom wasn't like, how do I put this? A skew. He's a skew. And um, so Bo has to leave and Bo's sad about this and live with his mom. So we end up seeing Mike's home, which now I realize is like a fabricated home with a sense of like a mobile home. And he has 35 acres they are going to have to build structures, permanent structures to live on, on this at some point, right? Is that the plan? And can we just like build something for Bo? And can we build something for Natalie's mom? And they can live in different, there's 35 acres, honey. Like Bo can be on one hole or side, you know, like you'll never see Bo unless he's like on the tractor. And if he's drinking on the tractor, like, did you ever see Man on the Moon? Like, oh my God, you're God let that not be happening. I'm just saying like, we can work this out in like a compound situation, but until that moment, let's pull back. So Natalie comes and they have lunch together and Bo shows up, honey, and Bo's, uh, Bo is Bo, Bowen, Bowen around, honey, and uh, ho Bowen around. Uh, and he sits down, he's, uh, a character and Natalie picks it up and she's like, you're so stylish. I think her, her word is stylish that she uses over and over again. The most stylish man I've ever met. 
Okay. And right away, she's like, Bo, you don't live at the house, no? And she's like, he's like, no. She's like, thank God, thank God. Oh my God, thank you, God. I'm sorry, I don't mean that. I mean, just God bless. Natalie goes in. She's like, how many drinks do you have, like at lunch or whatever? And she doesn't have to ask that, honey. She could just like sit back and watch. But you know, God bless. She is like very judgmental. We know this about her, like with the religion and the veganism and then, you know, don't think about aliens, think about God, drinking. And so honestly, I think that as an Eastern European person, I'm surprised she stopped there. I'm surprised she wasn't like, well, you don't think you should be drinking anymore? You don't think, Mike, look at this person that you call family with the shaded eyes, honey. He's going to pass out as this epileptic drunk person. I mean, you can't do this to this person. Stop it, you know? So um, I'm surprised. And that conversation has to, I'm sure, is going to happen. And I, that must be at some point the crux. There's no way she's going to keep it in that this person is like bowing. I mean, that's what that person is in front of her. When Natalie sees Mike's house and it's after a very long, windy drive, uh, she reacts poorly. Uh, going along the theme of this episode, which is these women don't like these places. It's all very dirty. It's all very gross. Just thought not for them. It's just not what they expected, which was cleanliness. Natalie the whole time is just in her hands, honey, looking around like those big blue eyes and those hands and those white yellows hairs like everywhere is honey. And she is just like, what did I get myself into? But she has better Botox than me right now. So like this doesn't move as much. There's not so many lines. Tariq. Tariq and Hazel, honey, we are like, what's happening with Tariq? He's been laying down the bars. Because as he says, he's actually an excellent rapper. Walks up to the mics like, bro, wait till you hear this shit. Some guy's like, get it, Tariq. This is what he raps. Girl, you're the hot sauce. In the hot sauce. Painted love ghost pepper burn my mouth off. Girl, you're the hot sauce. Girl, you're the, girl, you're a hot, wait, oh, I messed it up. Girl, you're hot sauce, in the hot sauce. Painted love, ghost pepper, burn my mouth off. Girl, you're hot sauce, in the hot sauce. So fine, can't see you when you're top off. When you're top off. He then rhymes pistol with pistol. He's actually an excellent rapper, FYI. Right now, you guys, if you subscribe to my channel, if you're a subscriber and if you like this video, you are the hot sauce in my hot sauce. So if I can't see when you're top off. You know, the whole thing with uh, Tariq is that he went to Thailand. And when he went to Thailand, honey, he was changed. Gone. He would loved it. Loved the whole culture, the food, the fighting, the knives. You know, he like took one home, one of those knives, honey, and he like cuts carrots with them. Whatever. He makes chicken stock. I'm not quite sure. By the way, Thailand, look up the Thailand king drama right now. Okay, basically, just so you know, Thailand has a king, and that king is rich, like one of the richest kings, like over like 40 billion or 50 billion dollars. And he, this whole year, this COVID year, has been living in Germany. And his wife, he guys got married to like last year, 2019, lives at a hotel in the Swiss Alps. And he lives at the penthouse of a hotel in Germany, okay? And he has 40, 20 to 40, just like sex slaves that he calls like some sort of special forces armed unit in his military. They're all given like general titles. And his grand consorts, this girl that last year was arrested and then a mysterious like press release was from this. Is, I love this story so much. Can you tell from the palace being like that grand consort, just this 35 year old girl, like that grand consort tried to usurp the queen and then she wasn't seen for, she wasn't jailed. And then they brought her back out. The queen's now back at the Swiss Alps and that girl is back with the king in Germany. And then the German government, by the way, was like a uh, Thailand, Thai king, you can't like live here and then govern your own nation from here. You're in Germany. And a bunch of nudes from that grand consort were just released because all this drama is happening with like the politics of the kingdom. It's fascinating. Huh. Anyway, so he meets Hazel. She's Filipino. Goes to the Philippines, brings his brother to the Philippines. We all know this whole story. So since then, uh, she's come out as bi, God bless. And they had this like sexual relay, like, which happened like this. Like they were on a break with Ross and Rachel. But then uh, Tariq met this girl. Okay, he says Minnie, but then when we meet her, it's Minty. But I don't know why he doesn't understand how to say a T. So then God bless Minty and him and Hazel meet up in Thailand. And like, because... Tariq can like speak Thai, like him and Minty were like, and they were also dating before, you know, like, and then Hazel was like trying to jump on board, like him and Minty like had a thing. And then Hazel was like super jealous. And so that had to like go by. And then another thing happened where then he thought that Hazel was pregnant and then also suspected that she may have had an abortion. 
Yikes! And so there's some trust issues. Yeesh! And so now Hazel's here. Whew! Okay, so Hazel, like, wants to get to America and she's just constantly like, where can I hook up with girls? And she just, I'm so obviously fascinated by this human sexuality is just the best. And I just want to see, like, what her type is, like, how she is. Like, we all want to judge and see if we think that she's more one way than the other. Because she's never been, like, super sexually into Tariq. She seems kind of like standoffish at all times. So we will see. But his whole other thing happened with him and Dean, which is him and Dean aren't talking. So after Dean like literally rang the bell when PLC like asked for like a villainous character to come in and like be mean to Hazel, he then met some other girl in another Asian country and now lived with that girl in the Asian country. And Tariq was like, absolutely hell no. You're a hypocrite. Honey, but here Tariq is going to like meet Hazel at the airport and he's going to step it up. He's not going to spring flowers like all the other people do. And they're not going to be purple, although they are purple. But he is going to also show up in Hazel's favorite color, powder blue, Tiffany box. But, um, you know, there's many things to wear that are representative of that color. On the live, I mentioned a beautiful cashmere sweater. So soft. And when she would hug you, it would be soft and elegant, classy. Uh, what he decides to do is get his best friend, who her name, her name is Angela, but she looks like Stacey Dash, uh, to take him to a store that sold him, I think, a powder blue dumb and dumber-esque suit that he shows up with at the airport. Hazel's there. Hazel and him hug. She's a little overwhelmed. He's overwhelmed with emotion. But, you know, it's better than the first reunion where she literally was like, you're fat, you know. And he was like, you're the most beautiful thing I ever saw. He equates her to a Asian Angelina Jolie. And I have heard back and forth about this. I think when we first met her, she did look like Angelina Jolie. I think that she has plumped up a little bit and that gauntness is gone because Angelina like really is a gaunt face. I think she's really, really pretty. I think that even like when she's FaceTiming him, like I'm just like so annoyed by her because she looks like pretty like in every, she'll just be like, hi, how are you? Every weird angle of her is like still pretty. Rebecca and Zayed. Honey, I don't know what to tell you about Rebecca, but she's like going here, going there in different regalia with Zayed's face all over it. She goes to a gym. She's wearing like a shirt of his face on it. And then she like goes to purchase him a gaming console and has a credit card with his face on it. And I saw this on Twitter. It's like, Zayed can't get a visa, but he can be on one. I love that. Let's just say GameStop. I'm not quite sure. And it's like, um, I haven't bought video games in a second. Uh, it's been a minute because I do have a, you know, 20 year old kid, 20 year old boy, and I got to buy another video game. And so the person's like, okay, well, what is your son into now? And she's like, okay, it's not for my son. Haha, <laughs> that was confusing the way I said that. I'm sorry. It's for my boyfriend who needs something to do while I'm out of working all day. And when she says that, you're like, did you hear yourself? Did you just hear yourself say that? She's like, oh, I just want to also make sure that he could purchase things through the gaming console, like other games to play. I just want to make sure he can really spend all of my money while I'm trying to make money. Is that true? Good. Here's literally my money on this credit card with his face on it. And then in every confessional, she's like, I really hope I don't make the same mistake twice with like inviting a young dude I don't really know from a foreign country over to like be here with me because they keep saying a bunch of sweet stuff to me. And we have to see these poor workers' faces as they're just like, oh, okay, is that what's, that's what it is? Okay. And she's like, here's a picture of him. Isn't he cute? And they're like, yeah. And then she's like, I get razzed by my kids because I have pics of him everywhere. She acts like Zayed is Mike Vitar or Leonardo DiCaprio for me when I was like a Tiger Beat 14 year old. Pictures on walls and things, you know, where, I mean, like as an adult woman, I can't imagine doing that now. So, okay, so she's dating someone that she is just uber sexually attracted to and they have great sex to her. I mean, this is, right? That's what it is. And so she just like lives in him and his lust and his like love of her all the time. And wants to look at pictures of him. Her maturity in life, just rather shocking. Jovi and Yara. Okay, so Yara now goes back to Jovi's place. I like Jovi's place. I think it's nice. It's obviously like a modern new apartment in one of the corporate housing places. The kind of place that you got like a free month's rent. The problem is, is that he has no taste, right? He has any taste. That's Jovi. Of course he has no taste. What do you expect from him? He's not gonna like know to go to like West Elm and like put together like a bathroom set. I mean, it's just not Jovi. Also, he's not gonna be a clean guy. Like he's not bringing out like Swiffer wet jet. This man is not going over all the surfaces with a Clorox wipe all the time. There's no method in this house. And I mean, literally like the method sprays. Yara looks around and she's like, mm, 
You couldn't have cleaned up? And he's like, I did clean up. No dead bodies. There's no pizza boxes on the ground. I feel like in Joby's mind, he was like, do you know what this place looked like yesterday? You uppity snatch? Shit. But Yara is uppity. And this whole experience of her is a lesson, a TED talk in boundaries and security. She does not do anything she doesn't want to do. And when she says no, she means no. I'm not gonna talk about it again. Don't need to talk about it again. I'm not gonna change my mind, I'm Yara. Did you hear me? Cool. For the first annoying blow up is the fact that she doesn't want to go out, obviously. She wants to stay home the first night, as they all do, but it's always a thing, and she wants to be in her like classic Victoria's Secret pinstriped silk PJs, wake up the next morning, and he's like, let's go to Bourbon Street! I couldn't wait! <laughs> they go to Bourbon Street in the day, and she's like, She's not into it. Do you think Vegas is gonna be better? All these people that wanna go to Vegas? Vegas, it's not gonna be better. But they get in a fight over America versus where she's from because she's being uppity about America. And he's like, you're from nothing. And she's like, you all think that America is better than any place. And that's not true. And I'm done with this, with talking about this. She's also done talking about whether she's gonna sleep at his mom's house, which is a whole situation. When we actually get to the mom's house, it's not bad. It's like the mom decorating that kind of like rustic gray chic and there's writing on the wall as like decor and that's fine, you know, but like what you can tell about it is that it's comfy, it's homey. She probably uses fabric softener. So the sheets that we sleeping on will be soft. Cause I can tell that you are sleep sensitive and so am I. Joey's mom made a stew. It's interesting. It's, uh, it's very brown, a chunky, dry looking stew. Later on in the scene, Yara's like, that dude was sucky, and I hated it. And Jopi's like, uh, well, at least she told me, not my mom. <laughs> We're all like, on national television. The gift that Jovi's mom gets for Christmas is knowing that Yara hates her cooking. Flavorless. So another whole situation is that Jovi's mom talks to Yara about the fact that they would like to have some sort of reception for their wedding so that Jovi's grandparents could come. But Yara doesn't want to have a reception because her family can't be there. So it's not important to her to have a reception. And Joby's mom is like, she's being selfish that she wants this thing. But it's also kind of like, well, whose reception is it? Or whose reception isn't it? Have a party for your son then, invite your grandparents. But Yara is adamant she's not gonna get married in a trailer park. Uh, I don't know why she thought it'd be a trailer park or what she means by that, or she seems like she's not a fan of the Bayou yet. Andrew and Amira. So we met Andrew and Amira finally. Andrew is a nerd, honey. He uh, starts out by putting on some sort of costume and we're like, what is it? What's, what is this gonna be? And he works in a daycare with his mom. It's at his mom's house. Not quite sure if he lives in the house as well. Really wondering if that's the case. And he is very cerebral. You can tell that through his demeanor and his cadence. And honey, he went on a foreign dating website and met Amira. And Amira is a half French, half Egyptian gal who is over where she lives in like some small French town. She just like wants to get out. She dreams of makeup all day. Sounds familiar. Also, she does mention the fact that Andrew treats her like a princess, which she's into. This is going to start to disintegrate a little bit in our hearts and minds. Andrew seems like he's a nice guy. I mean, he seems like he wants, you know, to have a family and he met this lady and he wants to bring the lady over and their situation is that they got a visa and they have six months to do it. And because of coronavirus, time is a clicking. And so he went on a Reddit forum. Can you imagine he spends time on the internet, that one? Hmm, wonder what else he looks at. So much porn and weird porn too. So on the Reddit forum, they're like, look, this is how the way you get around the whole like Trump ban. Wherever you are, if you're in one of those countries that are not allowed to travel here, go to Mexico, quarantine for 14 days, and just like slip in. Yeah, I could depend on the gate agent, so you're just really risking a whole bunch of situations and your own lives, but like do it or not do it. I don't know. This is what happened to us. It worked for us. So now he's obsessive about that and wants that to happen. And she has trepidations because it's a whole pandemic. To do this, he has to miss the baby shower of his sister Connie, and Connie makes it seem like this is huge. Weren't you just kind of like, all right, Connie, it's fine. You're chill, Connie. You have everyone from your baby registry to send you the gifts. You're fine. No one cares. The baby isn't even here yet. And plus, he's going to bring you the present anyway. And the present is a blue beret in a size that would fit you, Connie. I don't understand. Is this for Connie? You know who really could have used a powder blue beret? Tariq. 
Amira, after FaceTiming him in what looks like a weird Rastafarian hat you would buy off a boardwalk, has a sit down with her dad. Honey, you know me, I love this dad sit down. This dad sit down is with her and her Arab dad. He's Egyptian, I think, and they have very similar faces and they're talking in between French and English. And he's speaking English with an Arabic accent. So you know he speaks Arabic. They're so learned. And he's like, I don't like Andrew. He makes you cry. Also, he's pressuring you to travel. And she's like, yes, you're not gonna tell me this Arab dad's wrong. He knows something, he sees something. There is something about Andrew, besides the massive cum in his hair. All right, baby booze, I love you so much. Thank you so much for being here. I hope wherever you are, you are surrounded by love and healthy and safe. Oh, I'm gonna send you my heart and my love and my light. Thank you for joining me tonight. As always, if you wanna follow me on Twitter and Instagram, you can at Chris L. Farah, of course. You can also find my Facebook group, Vanity Farah. Take care of yourselves and each other. Stand up for what you believe and make art. Happy holidays, happy new year. Bye.